How's it going folks? Had a couple of people ask us what we plan on growing in spring. Uh, now we're coming into spring down here in the Southern Hemisphere, um, South East Queensland to be more precise, Australia. Uh, so I thought I'd give you a bit of a look uh, just to satisfy some people's curiosity. Uh, pretty much we're all planning out a lot of seed that's been gifted to us or we've picked up through our seed sharing group down here. So there are a couple of other things we're going to be trying out that I've bought. Um, just things trying a few different varieties of capsicums or sweet peppers as a lot of people in the northern hemisphere know them as uh, potatoes going to have another crack of potatoes uh, going to try them uh, Dan from the allotment diary style well hopefully uh, Brendan and Ian and a few other people have tried it um, a few other youtubers and it, it works fantastically from what I've seen uh, from their results I uh, haven't had that best of luck with potatoes here so I'm going to give it one more crack um, also too, we're putting in our spice, uh, I've already got one barrel sorted out with some madras um, spice and there's some other ones already on the go that we're not touching, like there's some ginger in this mess behind me here, this jungle, we're just going to let them go, so they're all sorted. Uh, we do have a couple of fruit trees that we really should be putting in the ground, they'll be going out the front, um, you'll see them in upcoming walk around clips. But for now, we'll pretty much all just um, focus on a couple of the seeds that we've got. So I'll bring you down and give you a bit of a flick through the packets. So to begin with, these are some of the seeds some folks have sent us. We do have other seeds that people have shared with us, but this is just our first sowing, what's going out this weekend, or hopefully this afternoon. Uh, to begin with, we have some Armenian cucumber that's come from Irish Eyes, Irish Eyes Gardening Seeds, all the way from the States, from Tim. Thank you very much mate, really appreciate this, he sent a few different packets over. Um, just to clarify something, you can get seeds brought into Australia, just for you Aussies out there, as long as they're declared. Um, Tim did the right thing, declared what these, see, what these were on the outside of the packet and they came through uh, the biosecurity fine. Some seeds won't make it through. I've had pumpkin seeds um, sent to me that didn't make it through. Also, certain um, other plants that are declared weeds won't make it through. But as long as you do the right thing, follow the right channels, you will get seeds through. Um, I'll put a link in the description below to the uh, relevant um, website here for you Aussies. But yeah, these Armenian cucumbers, really interested in growing them. Um, uh, I've seen them posted on blogs and other people's videos on here on YouTube, so really want to have a crack at these guys. A couple of other plants that we're trying this year are some hybrids. Um, I've got some corn I'll show you in a minute that are hybrids, uh, a sweet corn variety, but I had a, a good mate, Nathan, share these guys with me. These are a packet of Purple Haze F1 um, carrots. So. F1s, just for all hybrids in general, just for you guys who um, are not quite certain what's going on there. Hybrids are basically two plants that have been crossed. Um, can be for disease resistance, um, could be for vigor, uh, how fast they grow and how fast they set fruit uh, for cooler areas, or it um, could be just for the flavor of the fruit even. There's nothing wrong with growing F1s that I can see. It is great to grow these other heirloom varieties because you can save your seeds and you know plant them year after year. These hybrid varieties, you can't really save the seeds and grow true to type. What that means is if I save seeds from these purple carrots, uh, next year I plant them out, um, I can't be guaranteed that I'm going to get carrots that look exactly like these guys here. Um, so it's a bit of a hit and miss when you save seeds from F1s and from hybrids. That's generally why a lot of um, backyard gardeners who save seeds don't grow them because they don't want them to cross with their other plants. Not only that, um, saving the seeds is a bit hit and miss, so I just thought I'd explain that. Uh, another lot we got from Reuben um, is an F1 Tasty Green Cucumber. This one here is resistant to downy mildew, so that's why this one would be a hybrid. They've crossed it for its disease resistance, so I'm really interested in giving them a crack, mainly because we have a big issue with um, powdery mildew and downy mildew here in the subtropics where it's nice and humid, so these guys here will be a real bonus for our patch if they come off but I won't be able to save the seeds, it'll be a one-off sort of deal. Ruben's been kind enough to share a whole range of seeds with us. Uh, some of the others that are going out right now are these um, zucchinis, so I won't even try to pronounce that because I'll trip over it, I know. Um, these guys here are a vining zucchini, so we'll be able to grow these on the trellis um, behind me here. I'm really happy to have a crack at these guys. Um, I've seen them online and they look like a fantastic long fruit. I uh, will be picking them early while they're nice and um, tender, but really happy to have a crack at them. Also got some Chinese cabbage, so 
be interested in having a crack at these to see if they turn out like our Wombok that we had a great success with this fall or this winter just past. I need to get these guys in quick uh, before it heats up too much here otherwise they're just going to bolt to seeds I think. Uh, Nathan was kind enough to send me some tomato Mexican midget. Uh, we got the, the little broad yellow ripple currant tomatoes that we love growing here but um, always keen on growing a, a different variety. These guys here are resistant to um, fungal and fruit fly so they're going to be a bit of a winner here just because of the humidity again. Um, Sarah has sent me some giant tree tomato seeds. N not many, she just sent me what she could spare, but I'm going to be popping these guys in. Uh, now it's starting to warm up a bit, and we'll see what these guys um, turn out like. They'll be growing in here in the hoop house though, mainly because of our problem with the fruit fly here. So, yes, very interesting to see what happens with these guys. Just onto some of the sweet peppers we'll be growing. Uh, we saved a whole heap of bull's horn capsicums. We had a fantastic plant in the aquaponics when we first started it up. We had dozens of fruit come off that plant. Uh, a lot of them were hit with fruit fly, unfortunately, but it was the best plant capsicum wise or sweet pepper wise we've ever grown. So definitely going to be growing some of these guys again. But um, yeah, I went and hoarded a few bits and pieces from one of our favorite seed suppliers here, along with the potatoes I'm gonna show you. So we thought we'd give um, some other capsicums a crack from Green Harvest. We're going to be trying a sweet banana, also a purple beauty, and a yellow ditoro, ditoro which is basically a yellow bull's horn style um, capsicum as well. Um, have a crack at some of these guys. Uh, the reason I got a few different varieties is there will be some going in here in the hoop house to keep the fruit fly off them but I'm also looking at setting up one or two in the aquaponics. I want to do a little bit of a test with our bricks meter just um, to test the different sugar levels and I figure a capsicum fruit is a perfect one to try them on so we'll whip out the bricks um, little the little bricks meter at the end of the season and just do a bit of a comparison between the soil and the aquaponics with these ones. With the beans, I'm going to try for a climbing bean um, this time around. We've grown these guys when we were renters uh, in pots growing up the wire fence and they did fantastic, the Blue Lake climbing one. So well, we're going to throw a couple of these guys in where the broccoli is presently growing, uh, just over near the aquaponics, up a bit of a trellis there, see how they go. Also going to be planting some bicolour sweet corn, it's an F1 hybrid, and also some sweet corn max. These guys here will be planted out the front. Basically have this one go in hopefully this afternoon if I can beat sunset and we'll let them germinate, grow to probably about a meter tall and then we'll plant these guys in. So we'll have a crop of these guys, then a crop of these guys. When these guys get a meter tall, if I've got a bed spare, I'll throw in another crop of these guys and we'll hopefully be able to stagger our um, corn all the way through uh, the the summer period. A tomato that I found in the box, I'd totally forgotten about um, buying these guys to tell you the truth. I bought these after seeing uh, Paul's Life in Thailand channel a couple of years ago. He had some small Thai style um, tomatoes so I went and bought a packet of these, never planted them out so these guys are going in this year. These are a Thai pink egg, they're only a small variety but hopefully they're going to also um, enjoy the heat we get here and hopefully they'll be resistant to the fungal diseases our tomatoes are prone to over summer here. Another plant I'm going to try and sneak in is celery. Um, these guys we grew in the aquaponics and they grew fantastically. So we're still uh, doing the rebuild on the aquaponics but I'm going to get these guys started now and they can go in there once we rearrange the beds. Just the aquaponics celery uh, really kicked butt on any that we've grown in the soil. The, uh, the stems were firm, um, they weren't hollow like the ones we've grown in the soil over winter here. So hopefully these guys will be ready for the new aquaponics build to go out. Some other seeds we've found from a um, new seed vendor, um, fairly new to us that is, we've known about them for a while. First purchase, uh, Fair Dinkum Seeds. This is Brassica Nigra or English Mustard. Um, this is what you actually make mustard out of, the hot English mustard. So we're pretty much all going to be growing these guys for seeds. Uh, the greens will go into salads as well depending on how hot they are and whatever greens we don't eat will be dug through beds as nematode control as a um, green manure so really excited to try these guys because I've always wanted to make my own mustard. 
Another one we're going to be planting out from these guys straight away is borage. Um, borage is a, a great plant to get beneficial bugs into the yard. Bees love this stuff. The flowers from the borage are also edible, so we'll be throwing them into salads and the like. A couple of other things we've purchased is some seed potatoes. These guys here, these are Desiree. We got these from um, Green Harvest as well. Uh, they've started to um, throw up little shoots, so I need to get these guys into some bags this weekend. So we really like the Desirees. We thought we'd give seed potatoes another crack um, we tried some um, some store-bought potatoes that had chit over winter well, autumn and winter and yeah we had a pretty dismal harvest out of most of them so we thought we'd give these guys a bit of a bash and the other one we've got are the purple Congo potatoes so these guys here we bought some seed potatoes and they've started to throw out some little eyes as well these guys are a purple potato so we've got a couple here with some nice eyes set on them so these guys will be going into some bags this weekend as well so there you go guys that's pretty much all the seeds that I'll be planting out at the start of spring or hopefully before the start of spring in a couple of days um, we will be planting different varieties out all through spring and summer but I'll bring you up to uh, speed on them as that happens on walk around clips and the like uh, hopefully these seeds the majority of them will be in punnets or in the ground by the end of the weekend it's Friday here Woo um, the potatoes uh, because they've got eyes in them that's my priority tomorrow I'll be clearing a spot in the bed beside the camera here and planting the bags out in the beds might sound confusing but you'll see them in upcoming clips hopefully um, hope they do well um, a lot of these plants um, will be planted out in in different blocks like the celery I'll plan out a couple of seeds and then a couple more in a few weeks time in a few weeks time uh, building up to when they're ready for the aquaponics so we've got some other seeds I didn't bring down here that I will be planting out this weekend for sure um, things like beetroot uh, we can't get seed to set here or at least I can't um, in southeast Queensland so um, I need to plant some more of them we like to plant a few at a time so we can progressively pick them um, the other thing is the coral lettuce um, just a bit of a tip we have a um, it's a bit of an open head coral lettuce we've been saving seeds here uh, probably for the last four years from our own plants and from my mother's as well uh, what it is is it's it's slowly become acclimatized to our um, warmer climate and it doesn't bolt as fast what that means is send up a flower spike and set seed basically uh, the leaves tend to become a little bit bitter when that happens so this variety it's slowly becoming acclimatized to our weather here and we get nice firm open heads on these guys we've got a couple that we're, that we're slowly running out picking them bare uh, or picking them clean that is so um, yeah I need to get some of them in this weekend um, some other things carrots Kira's got a fantastic um, carrot out the front that is setting seed. It's an heirloom variety, so we're going to be saving some seeds off that. That looks absolutely fantastic. It's got dozens of flower heads on it. Um, she's mighty proud of it. So we'll be saving seeds from that, and that will be the carrots after these guys that go in. So um, I think that's pretty much all it, and I'll leave it there. Um, I will just mention the all the seeds that I've um, shown here. I'll put links to the supplies in the description below, even the ones I didn't mention because I forgot the name of the company. Um, I'll put them in the description below. Um, so check them out if you're here in Australia. Also that link to the Australian government website about importing seeds and plant material. Um, but I will pretty much will leave it there. Um, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions on this or any of the other clips, pop in the comments section below. can be a bit slack at responding to them at times. I've got a whole heap I need to answer today, but I do get back to you eventually. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for stopping by and checking out the clip in the garden here. And I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic weekend and I shall catch you later. Cheers, guys. Just to finish off, here's a bit of a quick look at the patch. We've got some broccoli we're going to try to finish off before it gets too hot. There's eight lots there. This is the little patch where I want to put my potatoes. And there is the fennel, the large fennel we harvested. I left the root in to see what had happened. And we've got some baby fennel coming up off the sides. My little bunny rabbit. Um, the kale. It's pretty much all chook and juicer food. And this bed here has the giant cauliflower in it. And that plant you saw behind me is a celery that's gone to seed. So there's no pollinators can really get in here to pollinate them, but yeah, I think it looks pretty spectacular. Over here, the amaranth has started to give a little bit of seed. I'm getting little bits off. I'm give the flower a bit of a rub. And you can see the little, well, actually maybe not, see a couple of little black amaranth seeds down there beautiful little sugarloaf cabbage. These guys here are my favourite cabbage out of all of them. 
my dismal little tomatoes over here. And we've got a nice boxcar willy on the back there. Looks like he might give us something. Um, perennial leeks, Mugsy Jeff shallots, another sugar loaf is forming up a little head here. And in this barrel there is also a ginger, ginger, um, the finger ginger down there, a couple of um, beetroot. And this is the cabbage root I just left in there just to see what had happened. I don't think I'm going to get little baby cabbage heads, but you never know. And that's pretty much all it, I think, except for this spectacular perpetual spinach. So there's just a bit of a quick overview of the garden, or at least in the hoop house, coming into spring now in a couple of days, so there you go.